Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today's reaction video is going to be Rainbow's Stargazer. Now I've said before a couple of times that this is my favourite song of all time. I think it was unparalleled at the time. I think it created a whole new different style of hard rock music. Uh, it's very, very, very different than a lot of the Deep Purple stuff. Um, and it was their, Rainbow's probably their best album and it really sort of set, set the path for what we call as metal and um, what we call power metal especially because there's a lot of fantastical lyrics in it and there's a lot of different things there's a you know a heavy driving riff i mean this for me is you know pal's mo uh, dio's moment pal's moment on the drums i don't think i've heard a better drum performance really um, the way this kicks in when we get into it you'll see and it's uh yeah, it's, it's something pretty special it's a hell of a way to start off a track and also sort of announce yourself as you know one of the, the best hard rock drummers on the planet the riff is thumping you know just a, that that driving riff that stargazer has <laughs> simple riff that drives it but the drums are pretty dynamite and that sort of sets up for vocals that are pretty much unmatched so we're going to have a little look at this i'll stop it a few times in between we'll have a little look at the different elements of the music well i think it makes it great um it's a long one it's a different one and it's certainly it's worth a well worth a watch. I know a lot of people have done a reaction reviews to this, so I want to have my little take on this because this is uh, this is kind of my song. So uh, let's let's go. Straight off the bat, now that drum intro. I'm going to play that again. That's magic. That really is magic. And that's a really diff difficult drum technique he's got there. Um, that sort of sets the song, really. You know, you know you're going to listen, you know, you know it's going into something special when you've got an intro like that. Um, Cozy Powell was, was a hell of a player. He played with the double bass drums that not a lot of people were doing at the time, and he sort of kind of he kind of made it his own. And uh, he it was he's a very hard hitter, but he's very tasteful as well. And that when I first heard this, I was a bit like, well, what's going on here? You know, you don't really hear you know an intro of the, you know for 10, 15 seconds of drumming before you kick into a big big song. And uh, yeah, Cozy Powell nailed this. Um, he played on. I think three of the albums from Rainbow and then went on to do other bits and bobs probably because Blackmore was being a dick and uh, decided that he didn't want power anymore and wanted to go in a bit more of a different musical direction uh, but this yeah great intro the drumming is very technical throughout but it lends itself perfectly to the track let's get it sings about you know in this a wizard building a tower and enslaving people to build a tower for him he really makes you think about it and gets you really involved he gets me really excited not as excited as one of my uh, close friends rich uh, that likes to uh, watch this but when he watches it he will only watch it with a wizard's hat on 
fun fact for you there. Um, Cozy Power, you can hear it as the riff's going in and it's driving, it's almost following the guitar, the guitar's following the drums, which just adds to that really thick sound. Note the deal held there. Up, down, up, down. Perfectly, perfect. I don't know what the uh, the vocal term for that is. Vocal acrobatics, I suppose we'll just call it. Um, yeah, it really lends itself. David Stone, who's playing the keyboards there, he was very much a classical player, which really complemented Blackmore's work. Uh, he wasn't around for long. Again, another Blackmore thing. But I think it really adds a bit of bit gravitas to what's going on. And it was certainly a foil for Blackmore. Cozy Powell is just driving there, he's not overplaying, but he's pushing the song. It really, this really gets me going, this song. I think this is, if I'm in the gym or anything like this, this is the song, because it just builds and builds and builds, and it just, it's the aggression that I can hear when they're playing, just makes it so special. Dio's vocals are always going to be great. This is kind of a showcase for him. More a songwriting than, than the vocal, because I think the songwriting is perfect, and the vocal is perfect as well, but just in, in a slightly different way. Um, <clears throat> Blackmore's riff as he's going through it's a very repetitive riff but when we get into the solo you'll see a completely different technique and a completely different sound from a standard lead guitarist we build a tower of stone without flesh and bone to see it flare but we don't know why oh now we Eastern scale, and, and you can hear it. It sounds sort of it's got a completely different sound to it. That those Eastern scales make something sound. It's not as punchy, but you can hear it, and it really adds that big, big atmosphere to this track that is like nothing else. I think that's what endears me to this song more than most because no one really plays like that or plays those scales like that. I'm so much of a Blackmore fanboy that not only have I got the same kind of strat that he used live when he's playing this, I actually scalloped all the uh, the fretboards a la Blackmore, but um, I don't know the video on that when I uh, nerd out. <clears throat> and we'll, uh, I'll take you through how I did it and how Blackmore plays it and why he plays a scalloped strat, because there's just basically there's him and Ingvi Malmsteen and uh, Ingvi copied Blackmore, so uh, it's Blackmore's strat. Thank you. 
Stone and Cozy Pal just backing everything up and Daisley as well. Everything's sort of right on the back of it and it's just allowing Blackmore just to do what he wants. And some of those licks that he's playing in there and some of the progressions are really, really technical and really good. singing about the wizard making the building the tower and he's enslaved all these people to build the tower now a couple of people said that's a little bit of a pop at religion um or governments or you know enslaving people to do what you want to do but it, the way he's saying it and you can see that the lyrics we believed we believed you know that he's singing about these people believing what the wizard was doing and how he's building this tower you know we built a tower of stone with our flesh and bone to see him fly you know it's it, I mean, who the hell comes up with these sorts of lyrics? This is just flipping amazing. Love it. See how it takes on another, the song almost has two parts. It takes on another life in the second act, which we'll call this the second act or a minute or so before. You've got the Munich Munich Philharmonic Orchestra coming in, and you can hear the strings, and that just again another layer to this song. Now, this song didn't really get performed live because there's too much going on to put this. With just five, you know, with just the band members playing on their own, there's too much atmosphere. There's obviously there's a whole string section that's going on with it and it's pushing it. So it always sounded a little bit weak live, and I think, uh, unfortunately, a couple of Rainbow tracks are like that. So this is definitely one to listen on the album. Ideal's done it solo. Um, Blackmore's done it solo, and they, I think, they did it on. It's on one of the live. Uh, Rainbow recordings from this era. I'm not sure if it was an actual released live or it was sort of released right down the line of a sort of posthumous release. But um, yeah, you can't really get all of this into one because there's so much going on. And like I say, when the, the, the Munich Philharmonic come in there, you can just hear it and it adds to everything. So then suddenly the drums are being uplifted, the vocals, he's just taking it up a notch. Everything just feels like it's taking a whole nother level. Again, another, another, another little thing that makes this song so special and just so different. So many
Da. Look, 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 look. He, he's so expressive in how he sings. He's just, he wants you, he doesn't, he's not just singing something, he wants you to literally imagine you're watching a film, but you, you imagine that film by closing your eyes and listening to the music. And when he's this expressive and the lyrics are this profound, you, you can imagine it. You really can. I, I think it's amazing. I see a rainbow rising. So much mouth. Violin's really coming through. Time is standing still. He gave me back my will. Oh, 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 oh. I'm going home. I'm going home. My eyes are bleeding. And my heart is leaving here. I love that line. My eyes are bleeding and my heart is leaving here. It, again, another very, very great line in a, in a song that's just great. Um, and again, the expression and how he's using his voice. As it builds, the song builds, Cozy Powell starts to put in a few more fills and it starts to almost reach a whole another level. And then, like I mentioned before, you can really hear the violins cutting through and the whole of the orchestra cutting through, which just, just again, we're going up, we're going up, and we're going up, and we're building all the way through. And I think that really, it, when you've got a long song like this, you can't just have the same pace all the way through. You have to reach a sort of crescendo, and this is what it's doing now. And as we finish this song out, you'll see. You'll see. I think it's a lovely touch. What a performance. I mean, Dio really shone through on this. And um, when I did the top 10 Dio songs of all time, I mean, it, it's very hard not to say that this is it. He's my favorite singer. This is my favorite song. You know, I'm a Blackmore fanboy. I'm a Dio fanboy. I'm a Cozy Powell fanboy as well. Uh, not to take any relation with David Stone and the rest, but yeah, this song really gets me every time. And I, I, I think, again, when I've said it before, what makes it special is nothing else really sounds like it. And this to me, the year that it came out, uh, it, it gives, it gave that hard rock genre almost like a push up. Because you've got things like Purple were heavy when they started, you know, Black Sabbath were heavy. But this combines heaviness with driving, with the driving speed, and it's got the bombastic drums. And I know the rest had them as well, but this is just different. It's very different. You've got those different scales coming in, and you've got that different vibe, completely different sound. But also, what you've got is you've got a mix of, you know, some unbelievable musicians all putting in some amazing performances. And I, I've never got tired of this song. In Thirty years of listening to this song, this is still one of my favourite songs. And I don't think it could ever be budged. I don't think it's Blackmore's best performance. I'll say that. I think he, there's a couple of tracks I'd put above this if I was rating the top 10 Blackmore songs, but if I was going to say the top 10 Dio or the Cozy Powell's, or songs that Cozy Powell's played on, this would 100% be number one. I'll save my favourite pick of Blackmore's, um, this, my favourite track that Blackmore played on in Rainbow, because it's more guitar oriented, so that's why I feel like that's his moment, and this really is kind of Dio's moment in the band, where he sort of, you know, if there was any worry maybe with the first Rainbow album it was quite light and it wasn't really going to follow on from the likes of what Blackmore was doing with um, Deep Purple Burn or what he'd done before in um, in rock um, and that heavy sound this blew out the water you know you start off with Tarot Woman you've got Stargazer uh, Light in the Black which is the sequel supposedly the sequel to this I 
still not sure about that but um, yeah unbelievable track I'd love to know what you guys think because uh, it's a track that's a bit divisive I think in a way because it changed it's a very specific sound and it changed from what Blackmore was doing and what Cozy Powell was doing and they made it really really heavy I think it's the ultimate hard rock track and I'll take as much flack for that as you want to give me so again I'd love to know what you think drop anything in the comment section below if you saw Rainbow when they were touring live it'd be great because unfortunately I'm too young to have seen them play properly and um, with the with this lineup which is the lineup for Rainbow there's other ones that are good but this is this is God mode right here anyway thank you for watching please like and subscribe and leave anything you want in the comment section we'll have a little chat about it and I will see you on the next video